You're not smoking on this one? We are. He not. Oh, okay, cool. I'm just gonna be looking at y'all like, damn, I wish I could. We gonna make it, you know, you can get, you know, you can plead the contact. Motherfuckers always be like, they call the contact. Right. You like, <laughs> hey, nah, you was, you was with it. Yeah. When you came in here. Dave, what, what was the first hip hop song that you fucked with that like converted you Whoa. to a hip hop head? I mean, Rapper's Delight, you know? I was in sixth grade when that came out. You was in sixth grade with Rapper's yeah. Delight. Yeah, yeah. I remember every word running through the playground, rapping it, you know? That was the first. I always felt like Big Bang Hank had the most underrated uh, verse on that bitch. Yeah. He had a rest color TV so he could see the Knicks play basketball. basketball. Yeah, rest in peace, Big Bang Hank. Yeah. Yeah, Sugar Hill is still, still out here. They still out here making a little noise, but yeah. Yeah. That was it. And then like, you know, Curtis Blow, the breaks. Curtis Blow. Yeah. Curtis Christmas rap. Come on, man. Christmas rapping. I I, I see so yeah, I'm from DC, so Okay. You know, when I was young, actually, I was listening to Go Go because my we man did, Chico Bay from DC. I, I know I was hoping to meet him. I really wanted yeah, to talk some DC shit. We just finished shit Wilding Out, and he had a show tonight. Yeah, Birmingham. I think. All right, well, tell him I want to meet him. Go Go shit, man. Yeah, he knows. That's what I grew up on, you know. So we didn't really, you know, I heard rap on the radio and I liked it, but you didn't listen to it at all. Like nobody, nobody listened to hip hop in DC for years, you know. So it was different. Speaking of which, Fat Trail just got out. Shout out to Fat Trail. Yeah, come on. Shout out to Fat Trail. Yeah, 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 I want. I hope he stay out this time and take that bitch all the way to the top. Cause he wanted the coldest, for real. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we need that. DC needs that. You know? Yeah, I we feel need. like every city supposed to have one. Yeah. Like it's Fat Trail and and um, Wale, and it's, it should be more. You know, right. like, I feel like yeah, every the city, city, the city just it right. just need one to pop. Yeah. That's because one Gogo. Pop, what we, I was saying. Need a little light. Because it wasn't no rappers in DC for years. Because yeah. Gogo was so strong for so many years that it really kept hip hop out. You were corny, like if you fuck with hip hop in DC for a long time. So that's was another doing live reason. instruments, everything. In the oh yeah, club, just the whole, like, the whole yeah. Go Go's all about the live shows, you know, going to the Go Go's, yeah. you know, and having the band just play for hours, and you know, just the vibe at the club. Mm. It just never made it commercial. They couldn't make songs, you know, because Go Go started the same time as hip hop in the '70s, you know, but they just didn't have songs and it didn't, you know, never found a commercial format to really make it grow. But it's give still, me five of your Go Go. <laughs> Go-tos. I mean, cause so so it's not even songs because you know Go Go was just like again they were just bands would play, right, right. you know talk. So I mean you know uh, Chuck Brown of course. Um, Recipe Chuck. Yeah. Recipe God yeah. Love it. Yeah. Uh, you know Rare Essence. Um, they would you know they were the shit back in my day. Um, uh, Trouble Funk really was one of the first hardest group. Trouble Funk got some some joints. Um, and uh, who else? I mean, you know, Backyard, of course. I mean, of course. Backyard still, still doing their thing. Uh, those guys are amazing. Um, there's a few others. I mean, there's a few others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Most definitely. It's where you set the tone. Yeah. And these mu this music, DJ. You fuck with that? I mean, I, I've been fucking with him. We've been sitting here for the last 30 minutes listening to him play. I'm just saying, bro, he on his way out the door. Oh. <laughs> Right, well. It's my dog, man. We started right. out great. All right, well, <laughs> I'm trying to come, save him. Bro. He must have known. Come through, Give bring him a me plug. beats for every yeah. show. <laughs> now, this nigga got me on a rotation, man. We just getting this. Same he thing. got five beats, and he's just like, oh, I ain't he need, to, he need to get in the and lab, the people man. starting to notice it. Yeah. <laughs> Got to get in the lab. I don't know what happened, bro. Uh -huh. I mean, I've been trying to call his people and shit. Yeah. This nigga right there, but I got to call his people. Ain't that some shit? <laughs> That's rough. Probably won't talk to me directly. That's rough. Speak to me. DC in this bitch today. Like yeah. you ready to start this shit, man? What you been up to? Hey, man. Yeah, just bought a house. Okay. Yeah, don't tell these people that. Okay. No. You told them. I ain't told them shit. I thought they ain't started. Yeah, we started. Yeah. They know now. You know what? Yeah, Once we start, good, Joe don't edit shit out. Yeah. He fucked with you though. He might believe it. I don't know. Yeah, he no, might believe it. Don't show that. Don't show that. He ain't gonna cut it out. Don't hey, look, he's ah. trying to move into the neighborhood nice and easy right yeah. now. I don't, I don't need that. I don't need it. But yeah. Little Richard Price said, 
Once you buy a house, everything costs five hundred dollars. Everything. <laughs> everything. I'm googling this shit while they telling me it's cost. Mm. He's like, you need the door hinges. I was like, how much are they? Man, just buy that shit off. Five hundred. I googled it already. I'm like, that's four dollars a piece. I go get them. <laughs> you ain't got to bring. I don't know what tax you charging for bringing that shit here, but I go get them. They be here when you get here. Ready. So. Mm. But yeah, everything costs us. We gotta build shit. Yeah, you like, building it out. That's good though. Yeah, that Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, I know your granddaddy proud of you. You know, just do some is, shit man. and think about all the black people who couldn't do it before you. Like they just wouldn't let it happen. This shit fucked up. We gotta get his shit right. Your granddaddy? Yeah, the hurricane fucked this shit up. The insurance was fucking with my head. Hey, hey. You know what they do. You know, okay, you do. Do. You know, you know what? Do. This would be the perfect time to say, welcome back to the 85 Show. <laughs> It's good to be back, first of all. Come on. Just looking around, seeing a lot of familiar faces and shit Come like on, that. Man. Yeah, I know these people. You know, we've been getting a lot of people stopped through the trap. Some very interesting guests. You know, because, you know, 85 South Show is all about the culture. Oh, man. And, and preserving the culture. Okay. And, and growing I the agree. culture. And, and, you know, getting to the motherfucking roots of the culture. Like, in, inside of this culture, there are certain things. Yeah, they're just ingrained. Like they're, we, don't they're know, we don't know where it came from. We don't even know. We don't know how it got We don't know. <laughs> so it's our job as journalists. Ooh, are sometimes we, journalists we gotta now? do a little Sometimes we gotta We're do a little journalism. <laughs> sometimes we have to do a Take little your book journalism. Cover picture. Take your book cover picture right there. Bruh, we gotta do a little <laughs> journalism <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> because we in the position where we need to be in a position Ooh. where we can talk directly to the people. We ain't got to go off no threads or no internet cap. We just go holler directly at the folks who was there. Yeah. So yeah. today, we got Dave Mays. Come on, let's go. We got Dave Mays oh, in the trap. Happy to today. be here. Man. Happy to be here. Thank you guys One for the having me. Of the source. The founder. The, the founder. Okay. See? <laughs> See, that's exactly, that's why we got to do our <laughs> thought Y'all was a group. <laughs> nah, it was, the I'm the founder. The source. Man, before we even get to founding the source, man, walk us all the way up into that. Like, how did this, how did this happen, man? Just, well, um, like we was talking about before, I grew up in D.C., just kind of got exposed to the music and the culture of the city, you know, at a young age and just kind of fell in love with it. And, um, you know, I was always entrepreneurial, had little businesses, you know, lawn mowing company with 80 accounts with business Word. cards while I'm in junior high school, you know, you know, shit like that. Just always, you know, make, trying to make businesses do things. So I ended up uh, getting into Harvard. I went to Harvard. Hold up, um, hold up. We never had nobody in the trap that went to Harvard. You got Harvard. Oh, man. A yeah. graduate. Harvard grad, yeah. So yeah. my son need a letter. I got you. Just he call ain't me ready up. Yet. But when he's four, he's going to be about ready now. You got one. You got one. You got one letter. That's it's what's up. done. That's done dope. deal. So you pretty yeah. smart? Uh, you know, I'm smart, I guess, in some ways, but, you know, I learn every day just like everybody else. Yeah. Don't you got to, like, write in cursive in first grade to go to Harvard? You got to do a lot more than that, but You got to be one of the Mensa students. Finger paint inside the lines. If you're black, you got to be in Jack and Jill. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> what was that about? What them Harvard chicks talking about, Dave? I mean, honestly, you know, when I got there, it was a, like a culture shock for me, you know. For real? You ain't been around that many white people before? <laughs> I mean, not just white, but just the type of people. They're people Chagas from, in. you know, like from other countries, people from privileged, the most privileged backgrounds, you know, the boarding schools, the private schools, you know, I went through the public schools, you know, I was more regular, you know, in a sense, and, but, you know, I'm up there with my fila sweatsuit thinking I'm cool, and, you know, I didn't fit in at all, and nobody was, was on that, so um, I ended up joining the radio station. The radio station was playing classical music all day long. That was what they had Harvard the students in there running it, playing classical. 24, 24 20, hours. Damn near 24 hours. But the signal was big. It reached all around Boston. So Harvard's right outside Boston. So I ended up getting a radio show on Friday nights at one in the morning uh, to play hip hop and go-go. Um, the show was called Street Beat. My, my 
radio name was Go-Go Dave. So there's a lot of people in Boston that still know me as Go-Go. They still call me Go-Go because of hosting that show. I ended up hosting it for four years. Uh, stayed up there through the summers and kept the show going. And that was a way for me to get outside of Harvard, connect with you know what was going on with the community and, and, and with hip hop because this is, this is like the beginning of the golden era of hip hop. You know, we had hip hop, we had Run DMC, we had Curtis Blow, we had Sugar Hill. We was had this like 87? 86, I get to Harvard in fall 86. So, you know, that's when uh, Rakim drops. That's when Boogie Down Productions drops, you know, first time. Then you get, you know, then you get Public Enemy, then you get NWA, Ghetto Boys, all that. So I'm, that's when I really dove into hip hop once I got up to the Boston area and at Harvard, the source came about, the, the station let you sell sponsorships to, and you could make money if you sold sponsors of your radio show. So I was going around telling people, because I had listeners all around Boston. You, 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 only, you, know, you couldn't hear rap music on the radio in the 80s anywhere. Like, you know, you had to find it in the middle of the night if you did and people spread the word. And so, um, you know, so I had the, uh, uh, the show on Friday nights, one in the morning. Um, I had, um, you know, try to go out and sell sponsors. So people are laughing at me, telling me, yo, you know, who's listening to a hip hop show on Harvard's radio station, you know, get the, get the hell out of here. So I ended up building up a mailing list of my listeners to try to show how big of an audience I had create a little database and then I during that time I come up with the idea to, to create a newsletter called a source to provide news and information to the hip-hop fans because when I'm talking to fans and they're calling in everybody wants to know information so back in those days there's no information when is the new Big Daddy Kane single coming out who produced that who's on the remix people want to know everything that was going on this is no there's no internet there's no social media there's, there's none of that and none of the regular places talk about hip hop on the That's radio. What I'm you like, what was the database? Just names and phone numbers. Name and address. Yeah. Yeah. Name oh, and man, address. You had address. Yeah, to mail I mailed the newsletter out for free. That was and I sold four ads on the back of that first. The source started as one piece of paper. A yellow Xerox page front and back that I mailed out to a thousand, you know, hip hop fans in the Boston area and to like all the record label people that I was dealing with at the labels, at the, you know, the different hip hop labels back in the day, that type of thing. And went from one page, this is uh, right before my junior year in college, so I'm doing it out of my dorm room for two years, but it goes from one page to six pages to 16 pages and starts to become more like a magazine and sell, starts selling it in the mom and pop record stores all over. Um, you know, and just one thing led to another. I just came up with the idea of like trying to build a rolling stone of the hip hop generation. Mm. You know, that was really the first inspiration, you know, big like, okay, Rolling Stone started as a underground rock and roll newspaper and it grew into like the biggest name of, you know, the 70s and the 80s and all the media. So anyway, that was kind of my, my first idea and you know, you know, I just never look back. Like I, I, I just work. never look back. And that's why all them ads was in the back. It makes sense. <laughs> the back of the source had all the ads, man. We had you good, might see some had, fresh shit. We had some good ad <laughs> revenue over the years. Definitely, yeah. definitely did. <laughs> what are some of your highlights from from creating that? Like, you had a long run. Yeah, it was. I was at the what source. What are some of the moments you know, that twenty stand years out almost? You? Oh man, it's 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 so many. The um, awards. Yeah, I mean, all the Source Awards, of course, you know, there's the most famous 95 awards, but all the Source Awards were amazing and have incredible, you know, memories and things that happened there, historic things, almost, you know, every one of them. Um, you know, just, I mean, Biggie's one of the most, you know, biggest things that happened with the Source and with the Unsigned Hype column. You know, Unsigned Hype, um, was a column we reviewed demo tapes every month of I remember that shit. unsigned rappers. People would just mail in their demo tapes to us and we would have somebody sit in the office and like listen to all these tapes and pick out the best ones. And so uh, Unsigned Hype, we discovered Biggie, um, DMX, mm -hmm. Mob Deep, Before Common, deals. Before, before they, they had a record deal. deal. All of them, like a whole lit. <laughs> Capone <and> Noriega, <laughs> Pitbull, J Electronica, Eminem, uh, all those 
before they ever had deals. And personally got some of those artists their, their own deals. David Banner, he was in there, Joel Santana. So, but Biggie was, you know, one of the biggest ones because, you know, we, you know, I personally had my man Matty C, who did the unsigned hype, bring the tape up to Puff. You know, when, when they gave Puff, uh, Puff was A&R at Uptown. And then he gave him, you know, a bad boy deal to start his label. And he had called me up and said, you know, I'm, I'm looking for rappers. Do you, you know, have you guys got anybody? I went down the hall to my man, Maddie, and he told me about Biggie. We had just put him in the magazine and unsigned hype. And uh, so I was like, you know, bring that tape up to Puff. And he signed him like a month later. Mm. What so. that Biggie said? Man, 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 yeah, come on. Hell yeah. What that Biggie tape sounded like, though, like what? It's you can you can Google it. A you lot of his it. demo was there, but what what? Now that we're talking about it, I'll, I'll mention one of the projects I'm doing. You know, so I just launched this new podcast network. It's called Breakbeat. Um, I got eight different shows going. I mean, um, you know, of course, aspire to reach levels of success in podcasting that you guys are already, you know, you know, doing at an incredible level so you know much much love and much props for what you guys are doing oh man thank you um so with the um the network one of the things I, i'm seeing in podcasting is you know i have shows uh you know similar kind of to this visual shows conversation one of my my first show that's already killing it you know is um you know you guys have had her on and i know you've been you know supporting her for a long time is don't call me white girl mm -hmm. so that's the first podcast on yeah, the break she, so, she got so much catching up to do because her demand is so uh, right yeah. people been wanting to hear from mona so right. shout out to mona yeah, yeah. yeah. Mona, mona. 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 mona i just love mona she, <laughs> you know. in the studio man she needs to be heard like, yeah. it seems like every other day one of her little clips is going viral. Right. Like, they, been, like, they'll take a long video and just yeah. clip the shit out of it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Why I think she's... weird to me? That's a whole more, yeah, man. I think she's going to be one of the biggest female personalities, period, you know, in the next couple of years. I think she has the talent to really take it to another level. Um, yeah, yeah. So I'm doing that, but I'm also doing, like, there's a whole other side of podcasting, which is the kind of journalistic, as we were using that yeah, word yeah, earlier, yeah. the journalistic side, which is the storytelling, the audio documentaries and series. That's part of podcasting has been blowing up the last five years. But when you, when you take a look around there, there's almost nothing for hip hop in that area of things. Um, you know, we have a few good shows like yours for hip hop, yours and, you know, the other, you know, good podcasts that we all watch. Or, um, but that journalistic side. So I'm doing the story of the unsigned hype column as an eight part series. So you'll be able to hear all those demos. You'll be able to hear the story of how we came up with the column and talk to the different artists and people telling them how they got their deals and all that. So that's an eight part limited series on Breakbeat that, that uh, we're crazy. producing now will be coming out in a few months. That's gonna be crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, you had a very successful magazine, but it was a lot of upset rappers. Mad at the source. The mics, yeah, right? Not that bad, not that bad. The we mics, that bad. who had problems with their mics that, like, I mean, ain't nobody I, come down there? I mean, they came down there? Every now and then somebody they, tried they, they, to come down like and up. get loud, but it never really went nowhere. We, yeah. you know, we were pretty, you know, we were pretty thorough in terms of just, you know, having good relationships and people respected, you know, the source and, you know, just from the beginning, the way we, you know, went about doing things. So yeah, I'm sure there were a lot of people. People, I mean, Five Mics was, you know, oh, man. the thing. Every artist would go into the studio to make their album, and that was their thing. I got to make a Five Mic album. This is what inspired the best artists in hip hop throughout the '90s to go into the studio. Uh, you know, we can't talk about Five Mics without shouting out my nigga Five Mics. <laughs> Somebody tell me be quiet. Literally, unzip that motherfucker. He was like, I'm gonna need for y'all to be quiet. Nigga, I kicked that nigga tent. You gonna shut the fuck up, nigga? Fuck around. Nigga, it was, when we just pulled up, it was an old homeless nigga conducting traffic. Like, he really was supposed to be out there, motherfucker. Hey, all right, young blood, mate, move to the left, move to the left, move yeah. to the right. He had on the vest and everything, but the vest said Warriors game on the back. <laughs> You see how crazy it is? Yeah. My, my dog, Lane Five Mike. Yeah. 
Oh, that's man. how cold he is. Oh man, I gotta meet him. That's the yeah. standard. I gotta meet yeah. him. Yeah. You don't know five? No, I don't think so. Oh man, five cold motherfucker. Man. Okay. You you would love five. Link link us up, man. I will. All right. All right, and the crazy so. part is, he'll be like, yo, fuck Dave, I already know Dave. <laughs> right. I've been knowing this nigga. <laughs> I might know him, I don't know. That's the thing. I, 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 I want to remember that name, though. Be like, <laughs> if I met him, I would remember that. He might not have been five then. Grammy okay. Street, dude. Okay. Grammy Street, dude. All right, well, but shout out five like, mics. He, he, he believes in all kinds of great things, man. But yeah, yeah. So, so you know, people. I'm sure different artists were, you know, they took it serious and they well, wanted. A lot of the wanted... artists in the South were like, "The source ain't fucking with the South." Well, who? I don't, I don't. I don't. I don't. That, that ain't. I mean, tell me who. And that, we we could bring in the artists and ask. First of all, we was fucking with the Ghetto Boys and rap a lot from the beginning. You know, that's really the start of South. And Luke, we fuck with Luke heavy in the '80s. The source was behind. I had relationship with Luke and Jay from the '80s. I'm still cool with those guys to to this day. So you know, it started with that. Um, and then, you know, even you know, even look at Outkast. I mean, you know, Outkast. They got four and a half mics on their first album. Now these should've are been yeah. should've been five, yeah. should've been five, but it's not like, like again, if, if, if we were like, what you were saying, <laughs> then we would have given them a three. You know, some other, you know, Rolling Stone probably gave them three mics or some shit like that. You know what I mean? Right. But the source, we were on it. We didn't get it perfectly, but we we loved Outkast and we helped push Outkast. You know, in many was many ways. Votes for the mics. Uh, yeah, the, the mics would be like a group of so editors. So one person in there that was like, give them a half. <laughs> no, <laughs> fuck it. They're not that good. I don't like it. Damn it, man. I don't see what y'all saying. <laughs> one more yes. One hole out. It's like they'd be like, nine out of ten dentists you recommend this to this. <laughs> Who is the tenth nigga like, that shit'll kill you, man. <laughs> fuck up. Don't do it. Don't do it. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> give it a half. <laughs> nah, that's funny, though. That y'all really had a yeah serious. We took it off. serious. We had meetings, and, you know, listening sessions, and <laughs> artists would come down. They would bring their albums to the source to play it for us, or invite us out to the studio to play it for us, and you know all that kind of stuff. That I bought so many of the fucking magazines. It's oh, like them man. shits couldn't come out oh, fast man. enough. Thank you, man. Do you know they still in circulation in like jail and all that type of shit? Even with them being that old, mm-hmm. the source they still won't see that shit. Because there's no other place to find that information. Yeah. That information that, that that source covered the things we wrote about. Because that's the other thing. Like the source was the magazine of hip hop, music, culture, and politics. So we covered. Yeah, you you bought the magazine. You might have wanted to see who got how many mics. You might have wanted to see who was in the unsigned hype. You might have wanted to read a, a interview with with Biggie. You know. Um, but you also were getting. You know social justice before motherfuckers today you know was talking about so we, we were doing social justice in the source back then we were doing health we were doing business we were yeah. doing technology i used to like you the know, little column with the bars in it where they had a whole where well, you like to go through verse hip-hop quotable quotable yeah, yeah. oh yeah that's quotable your, was yeah big. yeah people love that um and uh who you think had some of the dopest covers from the source oh man uh, i mean i have my some of my personal favorites. That's um, what I'm saying. The, um, okay, what well, the Dr. Dre um, cover where he has the gun to his head. That shit crazy. Okay, that that was just big for the source in a lot of ways because kind of same thing. Like I, you know, Dre had left N.W.A. and people didn't really know what was going on with him. There's all these rumors and stuff. They put out deep cover you know, on the movie soundtrack in the spring. And that was, you know, but it wasn't no death row yet. But you heard Snoop, boom, so everybody wanted to know what was going on. And I've been trying to find out. And I, I ended up, you know, getting like an advanced copy of The Chronic and, you know, was going crazy over it. I'm like, we got to get you Dre. You got it. I wish I did, man. Bitch. I damn sure wish I did. That shit, that somebody, shit somebody somewhere got one. Yeah. But uh, it needs to be preserved. But, but yeah, man. So I, I went and, and sought him out. I was like, right. I gotta, New I gotta face. get him for the cover. I gotta go get that exclusive cover. And I ended up calling around, trying to track down Dre. I ended up speaking to Suge Knight. Uh, flew out to L.A., met with him, and worked it out. Like you know, he convinced him that this was the you know we wanted to be on the cover right before they dropped the album. So that that cover comes out like a month or two before the Chronic comes out. So it really helped, you know 
pushed the chronic out and that whole exclusive story in that this is one of the best images of all time man that, that cover um what else i love the um the mary j blige cover uh that uh rest in peace to chimo do he shot her sitting on the ice sculpture in the silver um you know outfit sitting on the ice sculpture that was in maybe 95 i don't know if you remember that but that cover was was uh was really dope um i mean there was so many um you know what else <laughs> Stacking them hoes in Man, yeah. I wish I could find mine, man. Yeah. Man. You always had a source. You needed, you know, especially if it was the artist you fucked with. You saw that right. moment covers, like, I gotta get this. A couple one. pop covers. You but know, shit, that one with Dr. Trey, that shit just looked dangerous, nigga. That's, that make, you know what I'm saying? Like, you like, hold on, let me see what this motherfucker talking about. That cover, I like the cover when we had Dr. Dre leaves Death Row, and it was him with the electric chair in the background and oh, he's walking yeah, away yeah. from it. Like that was nice. the ill, ill cover. Um, the Biggie <clears throat> standing in front of the Twin Towers, you know, King of New York. Damn. That's a big cover. Um, so like, you know, yeah. the, the whole, pretty much everything is digital now, online. Yes. Like what type of, what type of advice are you giving people that's coming up who, who are trying to build a platform like that? I know you want to, I guess you would be considered one of the OGs when it comes to to that lane of, you know. I mean, as far as hip-hop media, I, hip -hop I, media. I am the OG. Yeah, really, really, yeah, really. That's I, I'm the start of hip-hop media and really gave birth to everything, you know, along the way. Um, but, I mean, you know, the advice I would give is um, kind of what I'm trying to do now with this podcast. I mean, Podcast Network, to me, is the new digital magazine okay people have talked about digital magazines for years and years and years and it's never popped off but a podcast network is the same kind of an idea where you have different shows different subjects you can have your fashion you can have some more serious politics and news you can have you know different type of things uh, and that's like different sections of a magazine and parts of a magazine you're bringing them to life so I really believe in the podcasting industry as a whole, you know, that it's going to grow, you know, even more, you know, in huge amounts over the years, especially as hip hop gets even more deeper into podcasting, because we're still just, you know, like I said, scratching the surface. And even there's a lot of people who don't even know they have a podcast app on their phone with exactly. you know hundreds of thousands of podcasts that you could listen to with all kinds of information, you know, so. Um, I think it's a great area and, and, you know, to, like I was talking about, the journalistic side, the investigative aspect of it, you can do, you know, you can do stuff like what you guys do, you can do so many different things, you, you know, ways you can approach it, as long as you have something, you know, original. Uh, we just invite cool motherfuckers that's to the trap and tell them that they're cool, because <laughs> we don't get to tell them, man. That's really how we do it. We talk shit and smoke weed. Yeah. Okay. Now we drink it's, beers and thanks. shit. Even, <laughs> the only reason I drink this shit is because it's, it's Miller on it. Like, yeah. I'm manifesting, so shout out to Miller. There you Let's go. Some there you go. Shout him out. I seen, Miller. I seen what y'all have done for others. Do it for me. Give me one. Cheers to that. I try to give, man, we need some more beers. Give me one. Me the one in there. So, yeah, one in there. I'm just uh, doing some advertising yep. and marketing. Straight. Miller Light. I'm talking to him about getting that Carlos Thank Bernard you. shit off the ground. Come on. We working on, on some other ventures also. I've been hearing. Yeah. I've been seeing a few Podcast things. Podcast a little better than the magazine. Yeah. Because you can read it while you're driving. Right. You don't but have to read it. That's the whole. That's what I'm saying. We're in a more advanced ears. world. So, you that's know. That's all listening. Never mind. <laughs> Reading with your ears. <laughs> Kids, don't drink beer. Let's go listen. Or smoke weed. Wait till you've grown, because it tastes better. It don't taste right as a child. And Tell the truth, bro. It'll hurt your stomach. Kids be having some bullshit weed, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that. I don't know that to be <laughs> Man, we can talk. I'm a parent. My son is a preteen. Oh, my goodness. Man. I have to do a lot of, like, this is the hardest part of parenting right now. Is that what you, what do you say? What? He got weed and it's bad. My son don't. It's the other oh. parents out there who not parenting. No. They kids That's got that bullshit saying. ass weed <laughs> out there trying to offer it to my son and shit. <laughs> Where's your fucking kids? It take a village. 
<laughs> Wouldn't be no bullshit weed on the street if you was paying more attention to your sir. Where is he getting it from? He getting it from you, okay? <laughs> you remember that old drug commercial? Where'd you get this from? Yeah, right. I got it from you, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I just figured out what the, your, this is your brain on drugs commercial mean. You remember when they used to have just like a skillet? Yeah, they the crack the egg. They should have said, what you and drug? Then, Put the egg in that bitch like this is your brain on drugs. Mm -hmm. I'm like no, it's not, cause my brain on drugs was a scramble to fuck out of that egg, <laughs> put some cheese in that bitch, and had an egg sandwich. My brain on drugs still know how to cook an egg. Better than you. <laughs> fuck you talking about? I would have never fried this other side. Or the one where the dude just be standing there, he be like, this is your brain on drugs. Mm -hmm. And he take the skillet and fuck the whole kitchen up. I'm like no. That is white people drugs. Man, I mean, <laughs> people ain't got high and fuck the kitchen up. Ew. Maybe some dishes got dirty, but we ain't broken goddamn thing. Bro, what makes you purpose. think? Like, let me ask you a opinion. Why do you think white people love hip hop so much? Wow. Well, I mean, I can tell you first why I love it so much. I don't think. Now you gotta speak you know, for the group on this one. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, you gotta speak you, for the group. You, yeah, you might got no because you can say it from the beginning, like. <laughs> How did it find you? Cause you, like you said, motherfuckers wasn't even listening to it like that. You just heard it in somebody's car, or like I heard it on the radio. Oh, we, they, so. they played it on the radio. Rappers Delight, and oh, okay, rappers a couple Delight. songs That's like that on the radio okay. in DC. That's, right. That's where. Okay, I heard cool. It. Yeah. Um, um, so wait, what's the question now? Why you think white people love? Oh, why do white people love it? I mean, I think it varies. I mean, I think obviously, you know. White people are attracted to, you know, wanting certain white people are attracted to want to be kind of cool and be down and, you know, be with the culture. I mean, you know, the culture is where it's at. It's the, it's the, you know, most influential. You know, it's it's just that, you know, it's that, that space that a lot of people would like to be in and want to get into. And I think, you know, that's part of the appeal of hip hop is the authenticity and the perceived at least the perceived authenticity, but, you know, uh, generally just the authenticity of things. Um, you know, I, I think that there's some, you know, like go, as far as me and getting back to that, because when I got, you know, fell in love with hip hop in the 80s, you know, it was also about, you know, the way it made me see the world differently in terms of, you know, just race, racism, things like that, you know, I, I, you know, like Karis One, would rap about Columbus didn't discover America. You know, there was a whole civilization of people. I can remember that, hearing that and being like, I never thought of it like that. You know, and he was one of the first to, now you hear that all the time, you know, uh, we have whatever, you know. What uh, your parents say when you brought that to the table? Take this goddamn <laughs> shit out of my head. I was already in college when that came out, oh, so I didn't, have to, I didn't have to bring okay. it to them. But, <laughs> Listen, David. You know, <laughs> but but it, you know hip hop was just it, that was an aspect of hip hop was the social and political consciousness that was bringing people together and and you know helping people to you know understand the you realities know, I hate, better. I hate that they'll never be able to make a song like "Fuck the Police" again. You can't. Why? Hell no. I think you can. Who's bold enough to make a song like that? Somebody needs to. They need Definitely to do that can. now with all this they shit going they, on. Like, yeah. I'm surprised yeah. nobody like that. Man, yeah. they, somebody. They, they, they skirt around, around that it. They fuck Donald Trump, so. Yeah. 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 So, yeah still, I will, somebody, need, somebody needs to do that. I, that's, that, that. I got, I'm voting for that right now. <laughs> somebody needs to make a fuck the police we remake got some, for 2021. Some Rollo, but let him come on. I feel like the fans pressure rappers to be too real about the shit they rap about. It's stifling the creativity. Rappers should be able to just rap. You remember in the 80s, that's all you had to fucking rap about. You how good you knew how to rap. And let motherfuckers know you ain't no sucker MC. <laughs> That was the worst shit you could be in the fucking 80s. It's a <laughs> suck MC. MC. <laughs> Did not want to be that. That was the first <laughs> bitch ass nigga. If you oh, that was the pre card oh. Before it was ever a bitch ass yeah, nigga. We, it was a suck you, MC. You call it. Wait, wait. We dig it back in the history. Wait. Man, you call the motherfucker a sucker MC, the DJ would stop DJ. <laughs> <laughs> Some sucker MCs in here? 
Wait a minute. So you just, yeah, I think, think that might how be. Much, how bad motherfuckers want to What else get that motherfuckers reaction? Motherfuckers would show up with a rap crew, some dancers, and a DJ, force their way in the party, and yeah. would fight if they wouldn't let these niggas rock the party. Yeah. Yeah. Just to prove you wasn't a sucker MC. <laughs> so what the sucker MC do? I don't know. I'll That's come back next part. week. We Nigga never just really go got to hear the sucker MC side of the story. I don't even think he went in. The sucker MC was outside like, mm, what if the sucker MC like was like, it's just a misunderstanding. <laughs> it doesn't mean to me. You're trying to label me a sucker, sucker MC? MC? <laughs> oh. Yes. That was him. Yes, you are. <laughs> that was him. I think all the sucker MCs that was like, they had rebuttals, but they didn't have deals. <laughs> You <laughs> suck MCs. You know how I suck MC gonna wear this shit. <laughs> suck MC gonna wear his shit to the back. Straight to the back. Straight to the back. <laughs> with, the, with, the no the, with the starter show. <laughs> with the ears tucked in. With no eye. <laughs> Straight sucker shit. Uh. Cause he's a sucker, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good shit. And do sucker one MC. Sure. <laughs> you so, you're so credible when it comes to hip hop, bro. That's it's accurate. a lot of young internet people who are like fans that's of this show. Do me one favor and just tell them how dope Cool G Rap is. Oh. oh. I mean, he's one of the coldest, Cool G Rap. I mean, he's a he's a pioneer because he was really, you know, one of the first just to bring that kind of reality rap, um, you know, from the East Coast, from from New York, and you know, and do it in a really just you know like a vivid storytelling way and and a lyrical way. He had you know he kind of had all of that, but he was hard, you know. So he's just a lot of people rank him as one of their top five or ten artists of all time. Um, cool G Rap. Shout out Cool G Rap. Man, you been watching any of these verses? Yeah, I've been watching as many of them as I can. I've um, been pretty pretty interesting to see, for sure. Mm. Right. Clayton, where do you think hip-hop going next as a culture? I feel like it's a lot of stones we ain't turned yet. I don't know, man. I feel like everybody blow up and then, you know, get try to get away from it. Mm. You know, everybody come a different way and it's cool for that purpose and I fuck with it, dude. I, I, I listen to the shit too, but it's like, once you hit that level, it's like, all right, all right, let me go over here and get this shit. Let me experiment and try to broaden my audience. That shit get too weird. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. Keep, keep Some motherfuckers, we just want you to rap, man. Please, just rap. You're good at it. Go. Crazy. That ain't good enough. Huh? You got you got this small shit. What you gotta do? I don't know. First of all, when you get good at rapping, you gotta quit. <laughs> uh, that seemed to be the first logical step. Yeah, yeah, at some point, you get so good at this shit that you gotta stop doing it. You just look around and be like, you know what? There's too many suck MCs. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get it. Oh, this is what y'all like. I'm out. <laughs> no, you, gotta, you gotta get so good that you quit. Then you gotta come back. And then you got a whole run just telling people why you left. Right. Right. Yeah. And then What's you can the drop reason? an album. What's you can drop reason? two albums. Then you got to be like, because sh- this one for the game. Then this one for me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's, it's the same right. script. Right. The me album, that'd be the one. I don't even care what nobody think about this album. Right. It's just me being it's, creative. It's, it's me reaching inside and turning myself all the way inside out and really looking at me. You know, I think this is some of my best work. Introspect. I drove myself to the studio every day on this one. I ain't did that one since my first album. So I used to just be in the car, zoning, listening to the beat, <laughs> walk straight in the booth. I ain't wrote nothing. I did this shit in 10 minutes. <laughs> Anybody who's ever recorded anything know that you ain't recorded shit in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> then you ain't that goddamn good. 
I guess you Gucci man. <laughs> Only goo I do that shit. <laughs> you Gucci man now. You Gucci. So you Gucci. So you Gucci. <laughs> I'm asking motherfuckers that. They, they ain't even gonna have shit to do with what they say. Oh, so I guess you Gucci, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's the new uh, Rome wasn't built in a day, nigga. Day, man. So you Gucci, man. Who some of, who <laughs> so are some of the people man, in your network, man, that, that helped you reach these levels of success with the shit that you do? Um, you mean just over the years or? Yeah, with, just with over the, the years. Cause yeah. like, we always talk about the importance of a network and the people that you have around you. Yeah. Like you could be brilliant by yourself, but you're going to need some facilitators yeah. who are going to have that vision, who want to see it all the way through with you. Yeah. I mean, I've been fortunate to work with a lot of, you know, really talented people um, over the years. Um, you know, that was one thing about me as well was, you know, being able to just kind of see talent and also, you know, not judge, you know, like you could come and be part of the source. You didn't have to have a degree or this type of resume. If you if you were dope and you had some cool ideas and you were in, you know, and, you know, if we, if we believed in you, we were going to give you an opportunity. So there's there's all kind of people now that are doing, uh, you know, big things in, in Hollywood now, you know, um, from like Carlito Rodriguez, he, he's a writer for Empire and doing a bunch of other TV, writing a bunch of things. He was editor-in-chief at The Source. That's uh, what all my Spanish friends call me. Carlito. <laughs> it's crazy that you mentioned that, because they literally, that's verbatim. Uh -huh. Carlito Rodriguez! I don't know who the fuck edited the other part. <laughs> yeah, but check him out. He's, shout out to all Carlitos my Spanish shit. connects. I'm talking yeah. about Hispanic and, you know. Selwyn Hines, he was, he's writing movies and, I mean, there was a lot of different people, I, you know. Who are some of the people that you got to see start in this industry and just run it all the way to the top? Oh, man. Like, you remember their first day. Yeah, almost everyone. I mean, we were talking about Puff. I, I met Puff when he, actually, when he was an intern at Uptown in, yeah. like, 89 or something like that. I would come down to New York with a bag of magazines and go around to all the record labels and pass out source and go network with people. And that's you gotta get I, Puff on him, man. Yeah, that's where I we met him. To, we went and kicked it with him, but we ain't even record shit. We had to do one first where we just talked to him in private. Yeah. See what's going on. We gotta get Puff on the trap. Yeah. Um, but, you know, many, many artists and executives um, that I've known since the beginning of their careers and came through the source or, you know, I've had a lot of great relationships, fortunate, over the years. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was not never like, like I didn't have, like, you know, my family ended up supporting me, you know, what I was doing after the beginning, you know, like we were talking about earlier at Harvard, but people weren't understanding. But, you know, I didn't have like a big network, or, you know, people backing me or, you know, things like that. I, I, I did a lot, figured out a lot on my own and just, you know, built relationships with other smart people in the business world and learned from them. and. Uh, surrounded myself, like I said, with a lot of really talented people on both the business side and the editorial side of uh, what I was doing. Um, I just heard the camera snap, and I was a little high, and I was like, I was just posing. <laughs> oh, that was a pose. It was so I want to, I want to talk about what you said about where hip hop is going. Hold right? on, watch this. Welcome back to the '85 South Show. Let's go. Oh, my bad. Let's go. No, you good. Shit written. Uh, okay. Cause it's like, how you gonna be welcome back if you never left? But it's back though. Right. We right. can catch him up on all the game we've been right. spending, man. We got Dave Mays in here with us, you know. Found oh, yeah. so oh, many. Yeah. Shit, there's so many. You done told yeah, us how you man. started off with the newsletter, and now yes. we now we here again. And look, you know, catch us up and tell and like tell me where you think this game going. And all that type of old players. Sure. Shit. Well, I mean, you know. First of all, I look at what you guys are doing, like, and, and you know, it's just, you guys are having incredible success, but you, you're being authentic, you know, you're keeping it. You're not gonna do what, you know, you were talking about earlier, like, you know, we, you might, we'll see, but I hope you guys don't get to that point and be like, oh, I'm gonna leave hip hop and go try certain other things. Oh, bro, what oh, you Oh, yeah, I'm Rick James Leathers. 
<laughs> you out of here? I've been, oh, I've been around these motherfuckers way too long being humble and like. Sometimes we just talk about how ignorant shit might get. I know I'm getting the ponytail. Like he been the next day, I'm he just going to flip and decide and that shit going to be long the and money luxurious. money is definitely going to change us then. And I'm going to be real different. But, but, but seriously, what you guys are doing beyond just being incredible hosts of this show that people know, you guys are businessmen, you know what I mean? This, you guys have a company and y'all are doing major things, you know what I mean? So like, you know, to be able to have people like that that actually do care about the culture and do understand the culture, you know, in control of things, you know, that can help us guide the, the direction of hip hop more, you know what I mean? If there's more like-minded people, so with what I'm doing with, with Breakbeat, if, if I can get to, you know, close to like a level of you guys, you know what I mean? Nah, then we're I'm, coming on there, you know, whatever you need, man. Okay, yeah. okay, that's need, love. Man, yeah. but, you uh, real as hell and you came over here and you fuck with us, like yeah. we said. Like when we started this shit, we going on what, seven years now. Yeah. It wasn't nobody to follow or no necessarily no blueprint, but we did a lot of trial and error and just right. seen it work for us. So. Man, it has been so many different iterations of right. keeping it going. Right. So right, but yeah, look at y'all now, man. I know, I know what it takes. You know, and what you gotta, you know, the yeah, commitment man. you gotta have and the beliefs you gotta have. Yeah, to, this, to and we we just stay not on focused it. in one lane. We bring a lot of different people in here from. Hip hop and, culture to the business and side. And from what I'm seeing today, like I said, it's a group of you guys right. too. That's hard to do, like to have good friends and partners, whatever that you can be in business with for long periods of time. And, and, and you know, that's I respect that. That's because we have a, a yearly Royal Rumble. Okay. Yeah, last motherfucker standing get to say all the shit. <laughs> all right. So who's been winning that? <laughs> Host, welcome back to Eight Fast. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga's whoop everybody ass. Be the most. That's how we run this shit over here. Yeah, Ain't no sneak man. beat. No. You gotta, you gotta, if you have any, what's that, complaints? You gotta put the gloves on. Yeah. That's how we used to do it at the source. We had, people would tell you, we had gloves and we had a whole room kind of like this because we were in an office building and had an empty room kind of like this. We used to throw the gloves on and, and get it in. You know? What the source office was like? So y'all was in there beating on each other. How <laughs> often y'all went in there? Y'all was in that bitch, were not you? Oh, we, yeah. I know. I, I damn near lived in the office. I, I was Give me work, five mics right work, now. Work, no. Work. no. <laughs> it was Put the fucking gloves on, bro. What the fuck? But the source yeah. office was like the, the like the environment you guys have here. It was just a cool spot. Oh. All the cool motherfuckers would come through, come hang out, talk to the you know the writers or the editors, the people working at the source. We didn't you know we let people so you know, go out on the balcony on, on the fire up. escape or in the hang and smoke or whatever. Like the source was the shit in New York. Like when we opened that office, yeah, yeah, people. You know, That's like, crazy. I wasn't even thinking about that. Yeah. I'm thinking shit so digital now and shit. Y'all was just, you know. Now you had to pull up. Shit. <coughs> you motherfucker had to show up. Tape recorder. They had to come. Man. Right. Motherfucker coming there. Prepaid cell phone minutes. So who had the best weed? They were smoking in there. Uh, yeah, this I at a time where a lot of weed yes, wasn't good. Yes. So who had the what, good weed? What rapper had the loudest weed <laughs> that came through there? That everybody was like, his shit stank. And you lost one uh, employee because he said, I'm just going to roll bust for him. <laughs> and he left forever. Going on tour with Snoop Dogg. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Dave. <laughs> I'll bring an interview back. Don't fire me. Don't fire me. Did you ever like, have an employee that went... Like, like did some shit like that, like left to do some too shit long. and stayed going way too long. <laughs> Forgot about him, they were like, I'm back, I got the info. <laughs> what the fuck you been? <laughs> on the Rough Rider tour. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Breaking news. <laughs> well, let me introduce you to Eli. We gave him your job four months ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. We did have some rogue, you know, contributors that, you know, they were kind of, you know, in rogues, rogues in the industry. <laughs> Again, you, you want could. that DMX story? <laughs> you know it? You don't work here anymore. <laughs> Listen, man. Stop showing up downstairs. Last night, he was at the Coney for four hours, man. We talked. I got all the exclusives. Did you know his album's Stop. coming out in December? Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Give me $200 right now, baby. <laughs> they don't know you. Man, don't put my name on it, man. You know I got the Fox News shit. 
What do you own? Nothing. Just take the story. I'll see you in three weeks. <laughs> Gotta get them exclusives, man. What's Absolutely. the hardest exclusive that you had? Like, jump the most hoops for? You know, hard as hard as fuck to work with. Right. I mean, to be honest, you know, the source in the 90s, you know, we were the Bible of hip hop. That's what yeah. people called us. Again, there's no social media, there's no internet. You know, the source is it. You know, there were other magazines that, you know, had a, a place, but nothing was like what the source, you know, really represented in the 90s. So everybody wanted to cover the source. You know, almost every artist, you know, wanted that cover. So it wasn't hard um, most of the time. The, you know, the, the, the most difficulty I had was with Jay-Z. You know, Jay-Z, you know, whatever the reason, um, we had agreed to give him a cover, but when we do a cover, we say it's exclusive. You know, we agree, okay, look, we're gonna get the first interview and cover on the source, and then next month you could come out on other magazines or other things, but we gotta have the exclusive. So that's, that was what everybody did every time. And me and Damon Dash had worked out an agreement to put Jay on the cover is an exclusive cover. Jay's album ended up getting pushed back a little bit. Next thing I know, the first, very, very first issue of Double XL magazine comes out, you know, trying to compete with the source, and Jay Z's on the cover. And I'm like, man, what the hell is going on? Like, you know, we had the exclusive, and he's not supposed to be on their cover. I kind of, you know, got into it with, with, with Dame Dash. That's my man, you know, I got much love for Dame. We talk all the time and everything. But, you know, we had some disagreement over that. I ended up backing out of the cover. I'm, I'm not going to do the Jay-Z cover anymore. And I switched it, I forget, to somebody else. He got mad. That was one of the times people came down to the office. He came down with a bunch, a bunch of guys. Dame Dash? Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. I know he said some crazy shit. What's the, I wasn't what's, there. I oh, okay. got the phone call and they would told me he's up here and there's a bunch of guys and da-da-da and, you know. They just threw Cheetos at me. But, uh, <laughs> you know, if, if things got calmed down, they got brought down to the, to the street and everybody talked and everything was, was cool. And, uh, you know, we've been great friends for years. But, but that, yeah, that was one of, the, one of the times where the cover was a little bit tricky. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because we told Jay-Z the same thing. We was like, look, you can come on the 85 South Show, but you can't do no other podcast. I look up, he talking to Elliot Wilson. I was like, I said, man, wow. <laughs> he on Rap Radar. Elliot, like, Wilson, okay. Elliot Wilson started at The Source. That's my dog, too, man. Yeah, yeah, shout out to Elliot Wilson. He started at The you Source. To the trap. You can buy this motherfucker if you want to. Did you know that? He, he started at The Source, Elliot. I know now. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Elliot. Elliot. That's what's up. Go out in the paint. That's crazy. Jay Z the is the biggest star that's ever ever rapped anything. I don't think it's gonna be a bigger star than him. Man. He took the game and ran with it. He, he was still running, still running. Well, we should have just can't see the track. We should be like four albums in by now. Waiting what waiting us? Come on. Yeah, I bet don't, don't, don't talk to me and say this. Okay. Y'all probably I've already been, got the album done. I've you been, the, I've been the advocate for... I just feel like we got to flood the streets, man. Need some product out there. Hey, man. Comedy, comedy is cool, but that rap shit is fast. Go. <clears throat> Let's go. What are you doing? You going a nice five-year rapper run? Shh. So that's what... That's, so now you... Okay. Shh. It's never too late. But I said it earlier. Nigga, do you understand? There are, uh, there are more 40 year old niggas you know than 20 year old niggas. You know how many beats you I always tell him to send them to him, and he don't he, never play them. That's why he he's stocking up all the beats that these producers been sending me. He I was waiting like, for the word. I gave him he too much know about I no said, word. send the beats to my music coordinator. I done made up a title for him and everything. <laughs> That's the problem. He don't need no title, man. I bet, don't you got the beats? Listen to me, man. He is a he is play, a play me some beats somebody sent, bro. Since you don't want to play shit you got. And it better be good. He's a savant. He's a I haven't been putting enough pressure on him. You know how he got good? Cause I kept pressure. He's on him. about to drop some, some got fire got on, on you right now. He's about then to drop he some good. fire. He let the pressure on. He ain't hungry no more. <laughs> he just ate. He just ate. <laughs> he ate a big ass sandwich. 
He stays stunned. No. All right. Oh, no, I'm just fucking with you, man. You got a question? Yeah. Uh, so you brought up the the photo um, with the Trade Center. Right. Uh, rest Yeah, man, I mean, we work with so many amazing creators on the art side even, you know, the source was big, you know, with uh, the graffiti movement very early on and a lot of artists that we featured um, are some of the, the biggest artists, you know, out today. I don't even remember all the names, but Todd James is the one who designed the source logo and he's like huge in the, in the art world today. And I know there's a, a bunch of others. Um, but uh, yeah, Chi was one of my closest friends, you know, who, who we lost earlier this year. Um, and Chi was just an incredible talent. I mean, you guys have all seen so many of his iconic photos, you know, Tupac, Biggie, um, Easy e um, Mob Deep. Um, I mean, he shot everybody. Uh, Wu Tang. He has some of the most amazing, you know, photographs of all time in, in hip hop that people will, all, you know, will always, you know, recognize and remember. So yeah, it was a lot of dope, you know, a lot of dope creatives, photographers, art directors, you know, of course writers. Um, you know, I, 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 um, I discovered Aaron Magruder of the Boondocks. Um, he he was doing the boondocks in the comic strip. The comic strip. It, it started in the in a, in a, in a, in a newspaper at the University of Maryland. Um, what'd you say? No, I said shout out to everybody to make the boondocks. Man. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Aaron started it. Aaron McGordy. He he was doing it in the Maryland, University of Maryland newspaper. And I came home to D.C. from college, you know, or from New York, wherever it was. It was in the '90s, so it'd been it had been from New York. And I got a copy of the newspaper. And I seen the comic strip in there and I contacted him and made a thing to put him in the source. So he was in the source for a few years before he got his newspaper deal and of course then the TV shows and things like that. Um, Tyson Beckford, the, you know, the first supermodel of hip hop, uh, you know, we discovered him just, he was just playing basketball on a street, you know, on the, on the playground in New York and, and one of our uh, art directors walked by and said, you know, we're starting, we're doing a fashion photo shoot for the Source magazine, you know, we you want to be in it. And that was how he got his first modeling thing. And he went on and did, you know, did a lot of, opened a lot of doors and, you know, one of the... He'd been on Vlad TV talking that shit. You see? Right, right. He got some he had, stories for And he yeah. talked about the Source. Shout out Tyson, man. That's love. And, you know, he gave, you know, he, he, he gave us the credit. A lot, a lot of times people don't, don't always, you know, remember that. But Tyson's a real one. You know how that shit be. Yeah. People ain't gonna give you the credit you deserve. They're gonna act like they was already on. A few, a few will. Yeah, most of them. Yeah. Nah, we try to celebrate everybody. See what I'm saying? What a yeah. beast. Yeah. What you waiting on? Like, don't act like you was waiting on me. <laughs> right, we were waiting on Who me. made this? Uh, Marina Jones. Marina Jones? Turn it down. Turn it down. A little bit more. Cause I wanna be able to hear that shit. You done turn it, that's not another song? It's Halloween. It was only 15 seconds. Is it Halloween? Oh. Marina Jones? Alright, let me see what he's talking about. Kick his ass, but sit. What the fuck we gonna do with 11 seconds of beat, Marina Jones? <laughs> right? <laughs> we gonna steal your shit? Turn it off. You know what? I'm only gonna He's play your shit up. for 11 right, seconds. Fucking the vibe up. Man. Turn it off. You playing it too much. <laughs> so wait a minute. I hey, don't know what just happened. We need more than that. He said some beats, but they like 11 seconds long. So once you start getting into one, it's gone. It goes to another. It goes to another. Oh, okay. You like that one? This a long one? Oh, no, now you want to play some shit. You see what it takes? You got to show them that there's other motherfuckers out there. <laughs> now you got, oh, this beat. Hold on, wait, I got some tape. <laughs> Stupid. As long as you want that bitch to play, it'll look. <laughs> no. Oh, man. Damn. <laughs> so 
Dave, what's coming up, Dave? Man, this uh, you know, this whole breakbeat network is really, you know, what I'm on right now. What y'all need over there? Real, real excited. I mean, shit, we need the 85 South show. Come on over. I mean, partner up. We need, you know, we need, you know, we I need mean, just we got some, some. We got some shit. We probably could kick some around. collaborations. Yeah, we got some all type of collaborations. Of you know, ideas like, and shit I, like I, that. I, I want in, man. 85 South. How about I we do in. one where we just bring producers and they just play beats? The whole beat. And don't nobody even fucking say nothing. It ain't. It's, it's that, too much talking that in the could, game. That right could now. work. That could work. We should just play fucking beats. Sometimes people might. Why would you like have that? a break yeah. beat network yeah, and not straight. just have one channel that just plays straight beats? Right. All right. Well, we, we on it. That's our first project. I, I want in. Okay. All right. And I want to pop in like every 30 minutes. We're like, hey, yo, this Carlos Miller. You listening to these beats on break beats. B.I. That's, that's all we need. That's all we need. Just have you pop that's, in. That's what I'll contribute. Okay. And we'll build it up. I'm not even going to charge you what I've been charging everybody else. Because we got the network. And I want to, you know what I'm saying? I want this shit to flourish. So, so break beat, you know, it's a, it's a podcast network. I got eight different shows. I mentioned a couple of them. I got uh, nine funny. now. Now you, nine, now you got nine. nine. nine now you right. Now you got nine. 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 Now you got nine. nine. Ten before you leave. Come on, okay. I'm hosting the flagship show. Okay. We, 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 I'm the breakbeat man. Done deal. <laughs> done data. <laughs> oh, you want to be like the uh, mixtape voice? You want to get? The, you want to be associated with it, like? Damn, son, you want to be that dude? <laughs> At the end of the hour, I come in and say, hey, if you want your beats featured on Break Beats, send this shit to blah, 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 blah. Thank you. Back to the music. <laughs> the eyes. So y'all y'all fuck with Funny Marco? Yeah. yeah. So he's he's part of Break Beat, his, his first You mean to tell me it's, you fucking with other comedians out here first? <laughs> I mean, wow, I, I, they, I couldn't get to you guys, they, but you guys are, you know, they, you guys it's never are like, strangers. like, it's never strangers. Like, it's always the people you know. <laughs> <laughs> always the ones I mean, you know. It's never too late, man. Never too late to mm. figure it out, man. We can. No, I'm just fucking with you, man. <laughs> Shout out to Funny Marco. <laughs> One thing we ain't never been around here, Dave, is some haters. We, ain't, no, we, don't, we, hate, do we don't hate nothing but onions and pickles around in this bitch. Yeah. Yeah, I, but that's dope. me. That's just yeah. my personal. Opinion. Yeah, yeah he's, he's he's dope, and I, his podcast is gonna be funny. I think we've been working on that for a minute. And yeah. then the other big story that I want to talk to talk to you about. I almost brought his son with me, but I'm doing the Larry Hoover story, um, a ten part documentary series. You know, okay. and, um, and you know I'm working with uh, the family. It's the first time. His family is going to participate in the telling of his story. Yeah, is you know very much needed that this man's story get told, and hopefully we can help change some of the public perception of him, which could help get him home. They got the Free Larry Project, Free Larry Hoover Project. You can look it up on Instagram. Sure, sure, yeah, definitely. Uh, would love to talk about Larry Hoover. I mean, Larry Hoover, like you said, people know his name. His it's a legendary name, but. You know what most people really know about him. Oh, he's the founder of the Gangster Disciples, and he's one of the biggest, you know, criminals of all time, or whatever. That type of thing is what the media has given us about uh, Larry Hoover and the law enforcement narratives that have been put out about him. But Larry Hoover is, you know, uh, started the Gangster Disciples in the late 1960s, grew it throughout the 70s while he was in prison. Um, he's been in prison since 1973. Um, and uh, he was in state prison and he grew the organization to one of the largest, you know, gangs in the country. But he went through a transformation in like the late 70s where he, you know, kind of, you know, just realized he had to change the whole direction of Gangster Disciples. He renamed it uh, Growth and Development. And he began putting out, you know, documents, writing, you know, memorandums and <laughs> giving out orders of how to change, how the whole direction that the organization was going to change, um, you know, sending guys who were getting out back out on the streets to start, you know, organizing in the communities, 
Um, and then he got into politics. Um, in the late 80s, early 90s, you know, he, he started something called 21st Century Vote, which was a political organization in the Chicago area that got really, really influential. A lot of major politicians had to come to them, you know, to get in, try to get endorsement or align with them to get elected. They were running candidates. He was registering, you know, thousands of young people to vote, doing marches, 10,000 people marching, you know, for school justice issues, you know, before this, again, anyone else, anyone else was really doing that. So, you know, a lot of people believe that Larry Hoover is a political prisoner because he was due to get out on parole in the early 90s from what he had been in jail from the 70s, and, and he was going to get out. And this is during the time where he was really, you know, pushing this, this organization of, of social, political action. He's the only black gangster in our culture that's ever talked about politics, you know, a lot of y'all heard him on the Ghetto Boys album, you know, it's one of the few places you can actually hear his voice because they've suppressed him now for 25 plus years. But on that album, you know, we all remember him saying, you know, basically, you know, we got to get together, you know, street guys got to get together all across the country and we got to, you know, vote and we got to get politically involved. And, you know, when, when the powers that be seen that he's getting out and he's got this huge political movement going on, you know, I believe that they said, look, we got to put this guy away permanently like they've done so many other of our, you know, revolutionary and visionary leaders that have tried to transform, you know, uh, the inner city communities, you know, um, over the years. So uh, he ends up getting indicted on a federal indictment, you know, gets six life sentences. And, you know, he's been in the ADX Supermax prison over 25 years. That's where they currently have uh, El Chapo, the Unabomber. I mean, he does 23 and one for 25 years. Uh, doesn't get to talk to anybody. They don't let him do no interviews. Uh, he barely, you know, gets to see his family, no physical contact, and I mean, it's just a and situation. The they say for that, what's the, they don't say, they don't even give, I know. mean, they, technically, with the criminal justice reform that. acts that have gone on, the First Step Act in, uh, in the last few years, he has qualified to be released legally, but the judge, ju judge made him wait a year to give a ruling, um, and then when he came out a year later, he said, yeah, technically he's supposed to get out, but I just feel like he has too much power to do something bad, you know, that I can't let him out. Some, some bullshit, basically. Um, so they just have always, you know, feared him when the fact is if he were to get out, you know, he would have a, a positive effect on helping to curb violence and things like that, I believe, for a lot of reasons. You know, when they locked Larry Hoover up in 1996, 97, you know, they said, oh, now, you know, we're going to stop all this crime and all this violence that Larry Hoover's been causing. You know, they made him out to be a monster. And, uh, you know, here we are 25 years later. I mean, we all see what's going on in Chicago, you know, everywhere, really. But, you know, we see those numbers, how many people are getting shot, killed, boom, 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 you know, in Chicago every week. Um, you know, so it's definitely not gotten any better. Yeah, he gave that energy some guidance. Yeah, there's a lot of people. I mean, Larry Hoover has changed thousands of people's lives, too. I mean, I've met now a lot of these people, guys who went to jail, you know, doing bad, you know, whatever, whatever they were doing that got them into, into prison and then learned the teachings of Larry Hoover and totally have changed their lives. I mean, thousands of, of young men and women. Maybe millions. Maybe more, yeah. You're right. Have Free changed, Larry. turned their lives around for that. Free Larry. Nobody talks about that. So that's why I'm so, you know, passionate about telling his story, and I'm so honored that the, you know, the family, you know, uh, out trusted to the family, me. Man. You know, they all yeah. Came let, out to the Chicago show. Yeah. Oh, Larry, Larry Jr. was he was with me here in Atlanta the last couple of days. That's what I was saying. And he had him and his wife. They had to leave um, last night but he was gonna come down here with me. He wanted me to, you know, say what's up to you guys. Oh, and if yeah. you do want him to come down, he, he, he would love to do it. He's yeah, a big fan trying, of your show. He wanted me to let you know. Gonna come. Okay. Well, I've he, been talking yeah. to him. Okay. I'm always, I'm yeah. always um, you know, in the loop of, of trying to get some dope motherfuckers to come yeah. through here, man. Yeah. So shit, break beats, we gonna fuck with it. Thank you, man. I told you Thank what you. I wanna do. We gonna, we gonna <laughs> rap, though. Yeah, we gonna put that together immediately. Well, look, man, I know this is your first time in the trap. Yeah. Don't let it be your last time. Oh, Come on, man. I won't, yeah, man. I had man. a great time, man. A great and time. And look, 
we, we got a lot of shit to do, man. This is this been a great, great experience. Just coming, you know, getting to chop it up with you. And, yeah. You know, get some insight on some shit. Yeah. Well, thank and you guys. Damn yeah, for us, man. Me. That's it. That, you know, everybody had in the bedroom. It's one of every barber shop that bitch get passed around. Yeah. And he did have some political shit on that bitch. Yeah. I remember the uh, one where all the hip hop people was going to jail. Yeah. 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 You know yeah. yeah. Hip hop behind bars. Yeah. There's a lot of those covers in the Trap Museum. Did you make it over there? I have not made it there. I really want to go see it because I, I love what I've seen and heard. I talked to Tip about it, you know, when he first got it going. And yeah. I think I think it's great. I, I got to get over there and see it, though. Yeah, you definitely got to check it out, Jay. You know, Atlanta is, is on the pulse of the culture. So many moments happen right here as far as this is the Do you know the New episode. Face? New Face? Yeah. I called him. He was supposed yes. to come up here. All the magazines. He probably got every by the art. every. He's uh, a hip hop historian. So okay. We gotta, yeah. Like he probably has every physical copy of the yeah. source. Keeper. He's source. the hip hop hoarder. Yeah. It's hard to find. I, 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 and see, they was at the moments. You can talk about the moments you was at, man. Like, cause. Right. Well, I'm, I'm also launching my own podcast, so that's also a way. Because I was always, you know, this behind the scenes type of guy. Yeah. I just wasn't the guy that wanted to be out in the limelight and get the attention. I was about business and building something, and, you know, I didn't really care about all that. But um, now I just feel like it's the right time for my voice to be heard a little more, yeah. you know. Tell have, your story. Have conversations yeah, with, yeah. with people and people get a better insight of things from me, just from my experiences and, and the type of conversations that I, I think I can have with a lot of people that I've known in the business, you know, you know, from the beginnings of their careers and, you know, but I want to bring you guys on to my podcast We're and coming. talk to y'all. Say just less. Turn, it, turn yeah, the tables. Come on, man. We want to hear them know. stories, man. Yeah. Yeah. I know you got, like... So ODB walks in, right? 240s and an ounce of red. What was this? <laughs> Episode three. <laughs> no, I'm just Rest in peace, ODB, man. Yes, rest yeah. in peace. You, what you doing? Yeah, that you, oh, okay. I thought you was about to say so. Well, shit, man. New face outside. Let's see what. Let's see what he got. See how you see. You speak him up. This shit is like a real show now, guys. <laughs> this shit is like so official. We've got drop in. Like, did we check the bags? How did he get in? Hey, hey, hey. Did, did we in? check the bags? This shit is super official. No. He pulled up we like this Pee Wee Herman, just like when they rang the doorbell. That show up. <laughs> doom, doom. This episode, of I love Lucy. This crazy. Oh hell. Three camp, four camp. You just elevated it. This guy there would go crazy. What's that right there? Let me hear something. Putting Mary J. Blige on it. This is your beat? Yeah, Mary J. need to be on this. Pretty funky, going first. pretty funky. I give it to him. In the pen. Ooh. Yeah, we need a little Happy Mary Bob. We dropping the app, too. They showed me. Yeah, we dropping That's what I was talking about. Real 85%ers. Be on the lookout for that app. Be on the lookout for that app. All app, no cap. All app, no cap. Put trademark. Huh? Send it off. Stand the app is out. It's out. The, the, the app, app is out. The right. app is out. Get that 85. Make sure the app out, man. That was, that's, that's incredible, man. Get the app man. on your phone, Congratulations man. on that, too. That was Hell a yeah. big move. Hell yeah. Yeah. Man, it's just Hold on, taking man. the platform to the next platform. That's it. It's like, that's it. now we need our own platform. That's, that's what I'm talking to about. Consume. That's what all I'm talking app, about. No that's cap. how all app no cap. That's how we can that answer that, that, that question down. about where hip hop is going. We can have a little more say so in that. Right. Yeah. I'm about to sign my first artist. Yeah. I, I'm 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 looking to get into the music industry. Okay. Tell them. But once you pop that 85 South album off, then you're gonna the doors are gonna be open for whatever you want. Yeah, to I'm, I'm gonna try to get one artist in every job. You gonna do a compilation album? Oh, okay. Kind of like Motha. Remember Powder P? You gonna do Mo Thugs? Like the Mo Thugs compilation? I remember that shit. I can't. You don't remember. remember Powder P? No. The white dude who was rapping at the end of that cowboy song? 
Lane's powder paint can to get a 12 gauge. No. <laughs> what was that Bone Thug song where they was rapping like cowboys? Anybody know? Oh, I feel like they had a little research department. Era they went through where they was. Can I look up that Bone Thug? It's Mo Thugs. They were rapping. They was a cowboy song. <laughs> they were early on that country. Yeah, rap. I would have watched the cowboy movie if it was Bone Thugs. Ghetto Cowboys. As the Cowboys. Yeah, hey, I would have watched that. Now movie. somebody go and find Powder P verse. I would have watched the. Uh, Since Clayton uh, want to have amnesia yeah. today. Can we play this? Did you ever get interviewed, Big L? There you go. New face, Larry Compton. That's my guy, New Face, man. Okay. Everywhere. Else this is on? the ultimate hip hop order. I, I heard Now, you talking about your Break Beast Network? Yeah. This you is your him. guy, man. Okay. What you got, New Face? He brought some things. New Face was there. There you go. That's what it is. New Face is here. New Face yeah. is here. So in a sense, he is there. What's up, man? Good to meet you. How you doing? Yeah, I brought, you know, I was always a fan of the Source Magazine. Oh, man. So what I you brought? brought? Some of my Your legendary. Issues. Look at oh, this. That, that's, yeah. a, that's that cover right there. Already that cover is crazy. Already. See, See that's the that one. cover. Is, this look one. how yeah. ill that cover yeah. is. This that cover is crazy. Oh, that's hard, too. Yeah, so you all was kicking some shit. That was after I left. Red, man. Come on, man. Change. He got all this shit. Hot boy. boy, that's another one. That's one of my favorites right there. Yeah, that one was, was that. The hot boy. The hot boy. Yeah. 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 yeah, I remember that. Yeah, 99. Uh, Bow Wow, Jermaine. That's hard. That's hard. That's a hard one. Yeah, Come yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Nice. DMX. Yeah. That was a dope cover. Come yeah. on, that Rough Riders compilation was a motherfucker. Hell yeah. Shout out L, man. I just and talked I to L, man. The Source Awards in Miami. That was my ticket stub right there. Uh -huh. that the CD that y'all was giving out. In yeah, Miami. that was the one at the Jackie Gleason <laughs> Theater on South Beach. Fontaine Blue was the after party. Yeah. Slick Rick, Cuban Links, Egg Shack, Great Man, it was, that, was a, that was dope, Jesse that Jackson. first Miami one. Yeah. Jesse Jackson was in there. Jesse that. Jackson was at the Source Awards? <laughs> at the Miami yeah, thing? Yeah. Bro, y'all didn't so never get to interview which, which Michael Jackson because the Miami yeah. went crazy, right? No. Should have got Michael Jackson in the Source. 2001. That would just be hard just to give Michael Jackson five album, five mics in every fucking magazine. <laughs> Whatever Mike, he, I would have made that shit a running thing. Yes. Mike get five albums. Nice to meet you. Yeah, get man, five pleasure, mics on man. one this is, song. This is dope, man. Thanks for bringing these by. Yeah. Yeah. So I told you, That's man. We face, see? We, we yeah. talk up shit. We was really just buying them a little time. Bro. Yeah. Really. We, I didn't know it was coming. I did this shit. See? The bat signal was already All right, up, well, put it we up. Just let, this is just to show up. you, man, that we are so deep That's and right invested up. in the culture. Yeah. And we've been following your work. And you got some fans over here. And we appreciate That's your love, contribution man. to the culture. Yeah. Appreciate you, baby. Appreciate you, baby. Appreciate you, baby. 85 South Show. We out of here. Let's get it. Let's get a flick. Hey, man. Hold on. We're going to get a flick. Yeah, okay. I need one on my phone.